Okay, so let's talk uh, more about this primetime debate. Ford O'Connell is a political analyst and a Republican strategist who worked on the 2008 McCain-Palin presidential campaign. Joining us from Washington, good to see you. And also with me from uh, New York columnist, Democrat, and co-author of The Party's Over, Ellis Hennigan. All right, good to see you both again. Okay, so Ellis, you know, Trump reiterated today that he will just be him. You know, he doesn't want to be unreal, his word, not mine. <laughs> he's, he's not an experienced debater and is even downplaying his preparation, but he did say this specifically about at least one issue on ABC Today about waterboarding. When people are chopping off other people's heads and then we're worried about waterboarding and we can't because I have no doubt that that works. I have absolutely no doubt. I haven't heard that term in a year now because when you see the other side chopping off heads, waterboarding doesn't sound very severe. All right, so Ellis, um, specificity is something that will be demanded uh, come debate night. Will we see more of that? You know, with, with Trump, it's, oh, whatever, yeah, I haven't heard about that lately. Well, we'll see how I feel about it today, and maybe I'll feel something different about it tomorrow. I love, by the way, Donald has been a presidential candidate for just about a month now, and he's already learned how to do the lowered expectations game, the Rose Garden strategy, right? He's the front runner. He's trying to hunker down, let the other people take the risk. And it's probably, it's probably the right thing for him to do on Thursday night. Mm, why? Because the others are, have much more need to do something. I mean, when you're way ahead, you can afford to have, he would be perfectly fine if the evening passed without any of us watching, right? Because mm -hmm. he's ahead, the others are struggling and gasping for air. They're the ones, they're the ones who actually have to take the risks on Thursday night. Huh, so Ford, even though he's the one who's leading most of the popularity polls, why is it he somehow still goes in as an underdog, given that he doesn't have the political experience that, you know, his other nine uh, contenders on stage during primetime will have? Who's saying he's the underdog, Frederica? He's, he's saying he's the underdog. Yeah, he, he's calling exactly. himself kind this of an underdog. Is that what's pointed out? This is politics 101 undersell and over deliver trust me trump is a story going into this and he will certainly at least be part of the headline coming out this is brilliant trump he understands marketing and advertising for a debate that could turn into a wwe wrestling match so trump's in good shape frankly and so ultimately you see him as being kind of the top dog in that fight Absolutely, because everyone else is scared to get near him because if they swing at Trump and miss, guess what? They're going to be off the, you know, they're going to be lower down in the polls. Trump has nothing to lose here. Everyone else has something to gain. The question is whether or not they understand Trump and how to judiciously jab at him. If they can do that while making a positive impression, trust me, they'll put Trump on his heels. And, you know, Ellis, he, okay, so he calls himself an underdog, or at least he goes in saying he's not an experienced debater, he's just going to be himself. At the same time, while, well, you know, he will be asked a number of questions on issues, how much of it is a risk for him that he'll be considered a real hypocrite because he has made donations to, you know, Hillary Clinton's campaign, he's made donations to a number of other, you know, campaigns shared that will be shared on that stage right up there with him. Here's the weird thing, Fred. So far, none of it's mattered. It doesn't matter whether he's saying something that's factually correct. It doesn't matter whether it's something that he's completely contradicted a year ago or a week ago, or he says the same three things in one sentence and then contradicts himself. The folks who are drawn to him, just they just like his vibe. It has nothing to do with any of that boring <laughs> issue stuff. <laughs> well, you're at, you know, Ellis, you make a very good point, and that's the deal. One in five Republican voters are fascinated and or amused by Donald Trump, and it's not so much about Trump, it's what he represents. His ability to channel that anger against Washington, against popu uh, you know, in, in terms of populism. And, and basically, that is the key with Trump. He is speaking his mind, and that is what has got a lot of people's attention, because he's driving the conversation to the issues that they want to talk about. Hmm. All right, well, let's uh, shift gears a little bit from the GOP to the Democratic side and you know all the buzz out there with Joe Biden apparently he's you know ramping up you know his team in a more active phase whatever that means at the same time you know it was back in January when he you know didn't necessarily rule it out do you think Ford we're getting closer to whether Joe Biden will definitively give uh, Hillary and uh, you know Bernie Sanders a run for their money 
Three months ago, I would have said you were crazy if you told me that Joe Biden could get into this thing. And I'll tell you, he very well could get into this thing because 37 percent of voters see Hillary Clinton is honest and trustworthy. She's creating self-inflicted gaffes all over the scene, whether it's the foundation, the email server, her answer to Keystone. And that's the whole deal. It's not that Joe Biden's a great politician. It's that he's seen as likable and she's committing gaffes all over the place. She's actually the Democrats Mitt Romney in 2016. Alice. Yeah, be careful with the talk, though. It isn't coming from Biden right now. It's his friends, his associates, and frankly, it's from a lot of people like us who think the Democratic race would be a whole lot more fun if he were in it, right? I mean, he's a good campaigner. He's got a kind of a, a, a blustery charm to him. And, you know, I, I say, come on in. The Republicans have 17. Don't you think the Dems could use, what, four or five or six? Come on, Joe. <laughs> All right. Alice Hennigan, Ford O'Connell, thanks so much. We'll see what happens next. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember, uh, for all the latest news on the race for 2016, go to CNNPolitics.com.